From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Crimea Report. Johannesburg-based drones operator and developer UAV and Drone Solutions has been using its vast fleet of drones throughout South Africa over the past few years to combat infrastructure theft as well as surveillance of hotspots. Donna Slater has a story. With a record volume of overhead cables being stolen from Transnet Railways in the past year, an increased rollout of UDS drones could help curb what UDS co-CEO and co-founder defines as a crisis. UDS offers different types of drones for different applications and is able to deploy anywhere in South Africa on short notice. My name is Otto Wordmuller van Elg. I'm the Joint Chief Executive Officer of UDS. So what we do is we're a drone organization and we generally fly at night. So we partner with existing uh, security companies, ground teams. We don't provide security services, we, we provide aviation services. So we generally we fly at night and we give the ground teams eyes and ears as to what's going on. And in, in normal security, you're absolutely blind at night unless you're using sophisticated you know, technology. You still have a very single dimensional view of what's happening on the ground. So we are very effective because we fly in the dark, quiet, lights off, and the criminals are unable to see us. And they behave very differently if they think they're not being seen. Cable theft, um, when it comes to railway lines, um, is divided into, into two categories or three basically. You get overhead theft, which is the electrical cable, which uh, we think is generally syndicated. It's far more sophisticated and lucrative. And we're finding those criminals are, you know, sort of operate all over the country. The signal cable theft is, is more subsistence kind of theft. We find that's more localized and, and not um, as sophisticated. And then we have infrastructure vandalings, you know, sort of batteries and, and, and relay rooms that are damaged. Okay, and that would be um, on any railway infrastructure belonging to mines, belonging to Transnet and belonging to Prasa. It's all very similar. There are basically um, three types of aircraft. Um, there's something called a multi-rotor, which is the, the well-known sort of, uh, you know, DJI type product with f between four and eight propellers. It's a vertical takeoff and landing piece of equipment, generally noisy and low flight time, so less than half an hour. Um, the next one is a fixed wing, which is a normal traditional kind of aircraft. Um, and that one would be a traditional takeoff and landing, so you need a runway or a clear space to take off and land. And then you've got something called VTOL fixed wing, which is what we're using more and more now, and that's a traditional type of aircraft that takes off horizontally I mean vertically, sorry, and then transitions into horizontal flight, comes back, uh, you know, the same way. So it's like a, a, you know, Harrier jump jet. What's not really well known is the drone pilot has to be licensed and it's classified as a commercial license. So they have to be registered with, with the civil aviation. They go through uh, the same courses, um, probably about 80% of the same content as a manned aviation pilot would do. Um, but they get a drone pilot's license. Um, they come to us generally fresh. Um, e either we train them here uh, for their RPL, it's called, or they come trained. Um, we then go through our, our um, internal process because nowhere else really provides security flying and that's 90% of our business. Um, so we train about um, 40 to 50 pilots a week now. We're ramping up. We have 250 pilots, but we hope to have 350 by the middle of uh, the year and maybe even 500 by the end of the year. The administration behind flying is quite intensive. There's a whole lot of flight regulations. So we have, there's, a, there's airspace management that you have to deal with. You can't just go and fly. You have to get a flight plan. You've got to make sure you're not flying, um, flying completely illegally. You have to get landowner's permission. You have to get civil aviation airspace you know, permission. We then have to physically get the pilots there. They would have to drive to wherever they're going uh, or fly. They then have to be, you know, checked into a hotel or some sort of accommodation. And we work from Richards Bay to Katu in the Northern Cape, from Cape Town to Tabazimbi, okay, to Limpopo. So we basically crisscross the whole country. We have a hundred sites currently that we're working on. Um, we have a 24-7 dispatch center, okay, which operates with all the incidents that happen with that kind of infrastructure out in the field. 
So in terms of the regulations, you have to have a safety manager, which is one of the designated post holders. Um, and our safety manager has been with us for five or six years. He's an ex-pilot, so he understands exactly you know, the problems associated with safety. And um, we analyze on a day-to-day -day basis what our incidents and accidents or the root cause are. It's very important to find the root cause, not an ancillary cause, because the only way you can deal with it is if you find the facts as to why you've had failure. And um, we analyze that and we down, you know, this month is the lowest rate we've ever had. And that's got a lot to do with training, okay, and good statistics. So we have, you know, pilot error, we have, we have equipment failure, and we have weather related issues. Those three topics are generally 95% of the incidents. The more you can, can, can control those, the more you can fly safely. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.